Hi, everybody. Welcome back to theCUBE's studios in Palo Alto. We're live here at Build Beyond, made possible by Vast in conjunction with theCUBE. I'm excited. Jeff Denworth is, is back. And we're going to get the customer perspective from Kevin Weiler, who's the head of infrastructure at Aquatic Capital Management. Kevin, th thanks for dialing in. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, guys. Excited to be here. So tell us a little bit about Aquatic Capital Management. What's, wh where'd you guys get started? How'd you get started? Why'd you get yeah, started? Sure. Sure thing, sure thing. So uh, Aquatic is uh, a, a quantitative trading company. Uh, it, it started as just AQTC. Um, and then, uh, you know, we just filled some vols in uh, to make it Aquatic. But uh, it's the former uh, head quant at Citadel, John Graham. Um, and uh, he started this company um, with the idea of, of uh, making a purely quantitative trade um, and having um, uh, you know, kind of a, a more, let's say, um, uh, academic sort of erudite uh, culture. Um, and uh, yeah, we got started in, uh, well, I started in 2019. I think the idea started in 2018. Um, got slowed down ever so slightly by COVID, um, but, uh, you know, kind of picked right back up and here we are. Yeah, I mean, you're, when I go to your website, it's like, it's antithetical to what you would expect from those sort of typical sort of Wall Street firm or the hedge fund grinding, you know, treating people like crap generally. But, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like this culture of almost like research scientists. Jeff, how did you guys meet? Oh, you know, um, we had a sales team in Chicago that had uh, worked with Kevin in the past. And, you know, we, we, um, we heard some, some rumblings about this team that was moving out of Citadel. And, uh, and we were just fortunate to kind of meet Kevin, who his nickname is Kiwi, so we call him Kiwi. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's, they've just been like, uh, it took a little while to convince them that there was like a new architecture approach that made infrastructure simple. And ever since you know, we proved that out, they've just been a great customer. So it's just awesome to have them on, on the stage too. And I think Kevin, or maybe I should call you Kiwi too. Uh, I think on your LinkedIn, I saw you building the world's best uh, a prediction engine, I think you called it. But um, so explain that and what you guys, are, you know, kind of what's your mission and I'm, I'm dying to hear more about your infrastructure and how you decided to sort of take a, a bet on a, a small company, you know, at the time like Vast. Yeah, sure. So I, you know, my background uh, was, was in uh, prop trading, which is kind of more uh, uh, emblematic of uh, the trading culture in Chicago. Um, worked uh, in that for about seven years um, and then had a kind of a small interlude uh, at another company and uh, was very much sold on the cultural, uh, I would say, aspect of this particular company. Um, it was uh, an approach to trading that um, I would say I was hungry for uh, when I was working in prop trading. Um, you know, the charge I would say in prop trading is um, just kind of keep the money machine printing, you know, as uh, as best as you possibly can. Um, and it's just a real grind. Um, anything that you tried to do that was purely research driven um, was met with a lot of skepticism. Um, and this company was exactly the opposite. Uh, this company is very much um, driven by uh, uh, kind of pure scientific research. Um, and that's, that's kind of the thesis. The, the thesis is that we can, uh, we can do a better job um, than anyone by, uh, uh, by applying kind of uh, scientific computation methods. Um, when I was working with the sales team uh, from prior companies, um, uh, you know, we were working with products like Hadoop um, and we, at the time, were trying to um, build something that was uh, very research driven. And like I said, it was met with a lot of skepticism. It's, this is kind of what I've always wanted to do is just a, a pure research trade and uh, the architecture and kind of data engineering therein. Um, but you asked a little bit about, uh, you know, what we do, how does it work? Um, you know, we take in uh, data uh, a lot of it um, from various sources. Market data is, of course, one of them, but that's not everything. Um, and then we, uh, you know, try to apply um, both, um, you know, I would say very basic um, 
prediction analytics to it and uh you know all the way up to you know uh, very cutting edge stuff so it's a it's a combination of a lot of different modeling techniques um and after we uh find something that we like as far as uh as a, a model is concerned we deploy it and we trade on it and then feed it back into the into the system and uh rinse and repeat how, how so how's it working how's the the approach working i mean what, what kind of you know history it's, can you share with us yeah, yeah, I, I uh, can't get too uh, into the de into the weeds on uh, on anything very specific, but I I am more convinced than ever uh, that uh, that what we're doing uh, is sticking and working. Okay, um, it so, is uh, you know we're expanding. So that means they're making money. Yeah, oh, good. Uh, well, this, uh, this, making money is a good thing. So so you're approaching this as a, a presumably a data problem. Um, mm -hmm. What? To, Explain your data strategy, and I'm interested in your infrastructure. Where does where does Vast fit, and what are they enabling yeah. you to do that you couldn't do before? Yeah, um, you know, we were very fortunate to kind of start with uh, Vast like very early on. Um, we needed a uh, a data uh, you know a place to put uh, you know these uh, these Vast <laughs> amounts of data. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and. Um, uh, you know, it was really Jeff that actually sold uh, oh. myself and our team uh, on this uh, and their approach. Um, what what we have found um, with uh, the sorts of um, data processing that we need to do, uh, and it's you know it's a multi-step kind of data processing type problem, right? You you begin with um, structured, semi-structured and, and unstructured data all, all the way across the board. And then you kind of have to massage it a little bit and then you try to gain insights from it and then you get to massage it a little bit more and then you gain more insights from it. And it's this, you know, kind of multi-stage approach. Um, and all along the way, you are trying things out and making mistakes and the bottleneck, you know, often we talk in, in high, high scale or uh, high performance computing about whether something is you know, uh, CPU bound or memory bound, but most of the time, in my experience, it's you're always I/O bound. That's that's really the big limiting factor, at least in this particular space. And so, uh, any platform that you can leverage that um, that allows that to go faster is going to pay off. Um, and indeed, that is exactly what happened for us. Um, we were able to move quickly. Um, not because we had the fastest CPUs, not because we had the most amount of memory, but because we weren't as IO bound as we would have otherwise been. So Jeff, did you pitch this to Aquatic as, did you pitch your vision or did you pitch it as, hey, we can store a whole lot of data and, and, and not be IO bound? The only, per, the only two people that got our vision before six years into the company's history were the, our first two investors. And subsequent to that, we just stopped talking about it because this idea of a thinking machine was just you know, too far out there for anybody to really grok. Um, and, and so when, when I met Kevin and his team, like really what we were talking about is, is a, a system that could be standards-based, which makes it easy to deploy and manage, a system that could be um, self-managing in terms of just being like a software appliance that deploys on commodity hardware that's cheap, and is always online and you know they were the researchers right so they're always trying to solve different problems using a collection of tools at, at, at their disposal and you know we were up against open source infrastructure that they were trying to cobble together um, and you know the open source the whole world's benefited from it so the the key in our case is not to say well that's just not, you know not the right approach but just to explain um, what we can do better and I, I you know obviously we were successful with these guys so can you talk about how you're using AI, Kevin, um, even generally, and I don't know how much you dug into the vast announcements today, but I'm curious as to how you see it affecting, you know, your infrastructure and your business going forward. Yeah, so um, whether you, AI is a, a, a very kind of general um, purpose term to look at a lot of different techniques um, and and you can absolutely apply it to many of the things that we do, but the the most important thing, and I kind of brought this up a second ago, is just iteration time. Um, you know, if you're training uh, a model um, and uh, you're using AI to do that, the most important thing is to be able to do it over and over and over and over again. 
um, or it's, it's not the most important thing, but it's you know one of the big limiting factors. Um, and so, uh, you know, you need to kind of throw a lot of stuff against the wall and see what sticks. Uh, and the only way to do that is just to have very, very tight iteration. Um, and so, uh, you know, that that was the kind of obvious uh, value add um, uh, as far as Vast was concerned right off the bat. I mean, we evaluated several platforms. Uh, like Jeff said, we were evaluating, um, you know, I, I have a high degree of confidence in, in my team um, and their ability to build uh, just about anything. Um, but as one of the members of my team likes to say, these these things that you can cobble together from open source technologies require a lot of care and feeding. Um, and uh, Vast does not require that sort of care. Free like a puppy, as they say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, free not as in free beer, but as in, as in a free puppy, yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, could we have uh, built something that moved as fast as the Vast platform did right out of the box? I mean, I think if you gave us enough time, probably, but we didn't have time for that in the beginning. You know, we were we didn't have DNS and email and you know, like really basic things. Um, and so, uh, you know, it seemed like uh, a pretty uh, cut and dry case of like this thing will do what we needed to do without us having to to mess with it really at all. Um, but then, as time has gone on, and and um, you know, I know Jeff kind of. Uh, or maybe it was Andy talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, Vast has been very good about taking customer feedback, or maybe it was, anyway, whatever. <laughs> um, the 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 uh, ability for us to, um, you know, move really really hard on their system and break it um, in ways that maybe they didn't entirely expect, and be really glad about hearing that, um, is a huge value add for us. Um, you know there are specific features in the in the vast platform that we requested and you know we're i don't want to i don't want to speak out of turn here uh jeff but like we're not your biggest customer i know that you're our favorite <laughs> yeah of don't, course. Tell <laughs> don't tell the others don't tell anybody else <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely um so yeah i think that's been a huge part of the story too is is um you know it's a, it's an extremely collaborative um, engagement. In fact, I think we've also, you know, we've given you some of our internal tooling as well. And, and, you know, you've been able to feed that back into your own platform. Sure. So I had a couple of questions. So what did they break? <laughs> oh, I don't even yeah, remember. Okay. That was like three years ago. <laughs> Do you remember Kevin? Yeah, what uh, so, uh, it, it is <sighs> researchers, uh, have a tendency to use uh, computational systems in interesting ways that you didn't expect them to. Um, and one of the things that has that has come up in the past is just this uh, this idea of creating lots of tiny, teeny, tiny little files. And instead of shying away from that problem, which is a classic problem in storage, the small file problem is a classic uh, problem uh, in storage, um, Vast leaned into it and said, yeah, whatever, go ahead, create lots of teeny, tiny, small files. Uh, and del deliver the ability to do that. But it's it's not only that, right? You know, as aquatics business has evolved, they, they, you know, as they're building these prediction systems, the more different multivariant data sources that they can assemble, the more accurate their models can become. So, you know, what we see is all sorts of different types of data now flowing into the system. And the key is like, you know, how do you synthesize it together? How do you, how do you build the infrastructure that can kind of put this all together in one complete picture? Yeah, it's, it's often the case, I would say, that that you architect a system for a particular pool of data. Uh, and, uh, you know, the data has certain characteristics. Like I said, it could be lots of small files. It could be lots of large files. That's just one axis uh, that you might be um, optimizing against. And what we have found is that uh, you just don't really need to worry about that with Vast, you can just throw a new data set at it and the system will behave uh, in a performant way exactly the way that, that, that you would hope it might. And then, um, you know, we had cobbled together our own system, I can assure you that would not be the case. Mm -hmm. and, and, and files are one dimension of it, right? And so uh, sure. Aquatics also early days working with us on the Vast database. And I, I put out a, you know, I, I went and visited 
um, Kevin and his team a few <laughs> a few months ago, and I remember we were in the middle of a meeting and. And as we were explaining this new transactional analytical concept like rolled into one system that's also his distributed file and object storage system, he just started like fist pumping like Arsenio. It's like, that's the first time I've seen an Arsenio fist pump in a long time. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it was perhaps showing my age a little bit, but also, uh, you know, I have a lot of experience with, um, you know, with these kind of SQL query engines um, and, uh, you know, it was it was very promising to see uh, Jeff and uh, you know his team speak um, in a in an informed way on some of the kind of deeper aspects of those. Like you know, for example, predicate pushdown on parquet files. Uh, you know, this is something that that the vast data platform at least advertises to do um, kind of out of the box and without you having to think too much about it. Um, I can assure you that that architecting that yourself is a very subtle uh, and nuanced problem. Um, and having a platform kind of, again, take care of that for you in the same way that you would hope that it would take care of your, um, uh, you know, just basic storage needs. It's, it's a huge value add. We've been, you know, writing actually the last, George Gilbert and I, for the last several months now about the future of data platforms. We've been using Uber as an example you know, who they, in 2015, wrote this extremely complicated system so that we could put together people, places, and things in real time. And so to your point, Kevin, it, not everybody has the resources of an Uber. Yep. So you guys are trying to build that horizontal infrastructure. Kevin, what was your aha moment with, with Vast? Was it sort of when they showed you the, the, the data engine and the database? Was it before that, when they were sort of breaking yeah, so IO boundaries? I'd say there's a couple things. I mean, the, the first thing very early on is, you know, I was, and, you know, I think, I don't remember who it was earlier in the presentation talked about, uh, about this, but, you know, I kind of, you know, worked as a data engineer during a time when the philosophy was bring your, bring your compute to your data. Um, and Vast came along and was sort of like, nah, don't worry about that. <laughs> and, you know, that was a really big deal. It's like, you know, we have these extremely fast networks. You just don't really need to worry about about doing that. That was a huge uh, aha moment for me. But but then more recently, this idea of um, not having kind of file storage and database storage um, be separate and having it uh, kind of uh, you know scale in a um, in a in a, in a way that kind of makes sense um, was sort of just the next iteration of that for me. What did that do for your for your for your business? I mean, specifically, is just get, yeah. Like, so get other so I guess and... yeah, yeah. I mean, I I guess that uh, it's allowing us to examine the possibility of um, having one view of our data that. Uh, or sorry, one place to put our data, but multiple multiple views. So you know, you know, the original fast platform you have object storage and uh, uh, you know NFS style storage. Okay, now we're just adding another one, which is which is database. Why is that uh, a big deal for us? Researchers like SQL. That's that's how they think. Um, it's, it's how a lot of uh, people that work in this space think. Um, and you can express things um, in a sort of declarative way that's more sensible um, for the problems that you might be trying to solve. Um, you know, you don't, instead of um, giving a prescription about how to manipulate data, you're telling, you're telling the system, here's, how, here's what I want back. This is what I want to see. Um, you know that's a very powerful tool for a researcher, and and that's what I that's what I'm most excited about, um, kind of going forward is is putting these tools in the hands of in the hands of researchers, um, and and seeing what interesting, uh, what interesting uh, things they do that 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 light the entire system on fire. And 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 that's a common theme we see with a lot of organizations, right? If I take uh, object storage or file storage as mm -hmm. an example in the research space. What you have is a bunch of cheap customers, no offense, Kiwi, um, that uh, ultimately um, would use a database if you had something that was infinitely scalable 
and um, you know, supported the needs of, of incoming streams and also didn't cost you a king's ransom, right? And so what we're now doing is we're realizing that people that have been building their data into these like specific data containers, like everything from Parquet to HDF5, weather codes, uh, oil and gas discovery codes, all sorts of like physics codes, like all these different codes where people create these constructs and dump everything into file systems or object storage. So well, why wouldn't you just arrange this in an exabyte scale database? Customers are like, well, what's the interface? We say, oh, it's SQL. Like, well, what's the downside? Where can I get one? Right, right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the right. problem, right? That's right. W was your aha moment before or after you started the company? So I, I you know, Renan originally pitched me on the idea of Vast when um, he was trying to get me to come, and uh, and he said, well, we, you know, we're building an interesting storage platform, and I told him, absolutely not. I'm not interested in this at all. <laughs> you ran. And then you didn't walk. You ran. <laughs> we ended up closing over a handshake where he finalized uh, basically a five-part. Uh, progression of the product that he was thinking about that ultimately ended up in what at the time we were talking about is that we, we actually had the, the deal that I um, that I kind of engaged in and said okay I'm in we were just talking about thinking machines for the rest of the night and it just felt so natural so that's why I'm here and, and that's that's the vision that I want to help bring to the to the world very cool well Kevin thanks for zooming in from Chicago thanks Kiwi. Time. Cheers. Good yeah, stuff. appreciate it Thanks, guys. All right, and thank you for, for watching. Next up, Power Play, the power panel with the analysts. We've got Rob Streche and Sanjeev Mohan. So keep it right there. John Furrier will be back. This is Dave Vellante. You're watching Build Beyond live in the Cube Studios in Palo Alto.